Hello everyone and welcome once again to another program of Prime Time. I'm your host Beverly. When I read about our young people and I feel very positive about our next generation, smart, focused and with great plans for their future. Well, my guest today fits exactly that mold. She has actually grown up on Prime Time and we thought it would be a great idea to bring her on again by herself to share her experiences and her studies. So stay tuned and we'll be right back for This is Prime Time. At Najico, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like knowing you're fully covered after an accident. The security of your home and everything in it that means so much to you. And knowing that even when the weather does its worst, you and your family are covered. At Najico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. Vitamalt takes care of you. And now, check under the marked caps for a chance to win prizes. More detail on press. At SXM, we're taking travel and tourism to new heights. Here we boast spacious check-in areas, 10 passport control points, comfortable departure lounges, and an exciting new airport mall. Finally, there's an airport in the Caribbean that takes your travel plans as seriously as you do. Princess Juliana International Airport. As I mentioned in my opening, we have a young lady in our studio today, as we said. She um, actually grew up on prime time. Many times we've interviewed her, along with her other peers who were studying abroad. Um, she's now doing her, working on her master's, and we thought it would be a great idea for us to invite her in and bring us up to speed. As we said, she's smart, she's focused, and she knows exactly what she wants, and that's Carla Vlon. Carla, thank you very much for joining me on the program. Hi, and thank you for inviting me. So, how's life? It's great. <laughs> hectic? Um, a little less hectic now that I'm doing my master's versus my bachelor's. They warned us from our bachelors that when you do a master's, it gets a little less busy. I guess because you focus more and you're not necessarily studying everything. You're focusing, so. So look back a little bit in retrospect to the last four years. You did that in Amsterdam, in Holland. Yeah, in The Hague. Mm -hmm. So first I did my bachelors at Leiden University College in The Hague, and I majored in world politics. And it was... Was it, was it difficult for you to decide, hey, I want to do my, I want to move on to my master's? Was it ever a doubt? No, not really. I mean, in today's world, it's almost like people won't look at you if you don't have a master's, mm -hmm. especially in the area of international affairs. So it just seemed like the logical next step. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so what you're studying right now, what's, what's your focus for your, ba um, for your master's? Right now I'm doing international affairs at the Graduate Institute of Geneva and I'm focusing on civil society and transnational. And so Carl, tell us about that course of study, the, the, um, the different courses that you have to take right now that you're working on your master's. So basically, they still want to cover the basics, so I still have to take statistics courses and writing courses and research courses. Still? Still, uh -huh. but it's because it's an interdisciplinary program, so they actually accepted people from all different studies. So I go to school with people who did economics, psychology, sociology, and so we're all moving into international affairs. So for me, it's a little different because I came directly from world politics. So I already, I just did this in undergrad, but for the other students, they're moving from a different discipline. So uh -huh. it's for me a refresher, but for them, it's, it's the basics mm -hmm. that they need to have. And so the other classes basically entail transnational issues. For example, last semester I did social movements in the environment. So different movements that had to do with the environment, whether they cross borders or not. So tell me some of those movements about the environment. Greenpeace? <laughs> yeah, Greenpeace is the main one. Mm -hmm. But um, for my final paper, I actually studied the refinery in Curaçao, Isla. Isla? Yeah, mm -hmm. and I basically just did as much research as I could about if there was a social movement on the rise, what exactly the issue was surrounding the refinery, 
And it was a really interesting course just to see how people unite and basically the common uniting factor had to be the environment. So it couldn't just be the civil rights movement or anything. It had to be linked to the environment. Mm -hmm. And so um, are they environmentally conscious at the, at the refinery? What you found? Well, there is a movement starting, I would say, but I... There's, a, of course, a lot of dissension within society because some people value the refinery for its right. value to curse Indian history, whereas other people realize that there are so many cases of cancer and lung problems that are attached to the refinery. They're wondering if it's more of an evil than a good now. And so it's just interesting to see the different factors or different groups within society really negotiating their future and something that was so essential in their history or what they see as essential to their history. So did you do this with um, online or did you have to visit um, Curacao to get some first-hand um, experiences there? No, I just basically researched online, watched mm -hmm. a lot of documentaries. Unfortunately, I didn't have the resources to fly to Curacao uh -huh. to do research. Wow. But for the smaller courses, they generally don't ask you to you do, do actual that. field research. It's Mainly when you're doing your master's dissertation and your bachelor's dissertation, they might ask you to actually go and ask people questions. So at this stage, have you, do you have an idea what you're going to do as your final paper in your master's? Because I know you have to um, defend that. Yeah, a little, ish, a little idea. I'm probably going to focus on environmental policy in the Caribbean region. Wow. What mm. exactly yet, I'm not sure, but I think that will definitely be my focus. Mm -hmm. So tell us um, what is life, because right now you're doing your master's. Tell us about where you are and how you got there. Right now I'm in Geneva, Switzerland. It's a beautiful city, very beautiful. That's about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's a different culture, especially compared to the Netherlands. But it's also the city of Geneva. It's an international city. It has every single international organization. So I wouldn't necessarily say that I would find the vibrant culture of Switzerland and Geneva because wow. it's Very mainly mixed. international people. I think it's a high amount, like 60% of the city is in, made up of internationals. So I wouldn't say I'm in the heart of Switzerland seeing what real Swiss people are like, which was different in The Hague where you know, you're surrounded by Dutch people on a basis and yeah. you really wow. experience the culture. The, uh -huh. it's, it's different in it's Geneva. Different. Do you maybe have to go out in the countryside? Maybe, yeah. maybe but one day. <laughs> what, what's the difficult um, transition for you, personally? From, From Hague, Hague to, to Switzerland? Switzerland? No, I think it was definitely a harder transition from St. Martin to mm -hmm. The Hague, especially because Geneva is quieter than The Hague. Oh, okay. So it was just an easier culture to move into as well once you're already in Europe. And I stayed in Western Europe, so it's not that much of a difference besides the language. Right. So now, instead of being surrounded by Dutch, I'm surrounded by French. And French. And so, how challenging was it for you to <coughs> leave St. Martin and then move first to Holland and then on to um, Switzerland on your own? Because you didn't live in a, in a student flat with sharing yeah. with, with students. If you ask my mom, she'll tell you that I cried to her every day. <laughs> I, I have selective memory, <laughs> so I don't remember any of this. Mm -hmm. But um, it was hard because here on St. Martin especially, you're babied. I mean, you know everyone that surrounds you. And it's so hard to be up to no good or to just be in a place where... All that freedom. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it's not necessarily that I struggled and went crazy with freedom, but it was just this idea that you become part of a society where you're literally no one to the people that you're walking around. You know, and it, at first it scared me a lot, you know, it made me nervous. Mm -hmm. Because if anything happens to you, no you one knows know because right. no one knows you, you yeah. know? And I would wonder how long would it take for people to know that I went missing? Yeah. yeah. All those things go yeah, through your mind. Yeah, those things all go through your But, I mean, I was in school every day for so long. That when you got home, you were just tired. You yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> and you would go to sleep and... Yeah. Eat lots of chocolate. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> All right, we'll take a break and then we come back. We'll continue and see um, a little bit about what your future plans will be. Stay tuned and we'll be back in a moment. This is Prime Time. A cruise is a great adventure. Not only for passengers, also for us. 
the Port of St. Martin. Our port always reflected the needs and aspirations of the time. From the first to the 1.75 millionth passenger in 2013. Our cruise story started in 1963 with our first cruise passenger. 50 great years later, 20 million passengers later, thousands of cruise berths later, we've become the leading port in the Caribbean. 50 fantastic years, like a dream. The dream of Port St. Martin lives on and reinvents itself every day. The best is yet to come. Travel Planners, an award-winning agency on St. Martin with a well-trained, knowledgeable and friendly staff dedicated to making your travel arrangements hassle-free. We can book your airline, car, cruise and hotel reservations to anywhere in the world. Visit our offices or log on to our website and take advantage of our special packages to the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico. Travel Planners, voted best travel agency on St. Martin. Hey, Bob, you're on family vacation. Oh, but your daughter's got the measles. But don't worry about it. With your Be Sure Travel Insurance, children under 12 are covered for free. Are you Be Sure? Be Sure. Yeah, for free. Welcome back, and thank you very much for joining us. This is Prime Time. And today I'm speaking to Carla Blone. She is um, a daughter of the soil. She's motivated. She's bright. She knows what she wants. And she's studying right now in Switzerland and, and doing her master's. And so, Carla, you were talking. Yeah, I didn't look at it that way, that you, yeah, that you would feel alone there. And if something happened, there's nobody. Yeah. yeah, that had to have been a little terrifying at the beginning. Yeah, I think that was my biggest worry. And then also the workload from university at the same time because it was also an honors program, and they really prided themselves in that. So I mean, mm -hmm. teachers really, they do not care that you have a paper due tomorrow or 10 exams. They need you to do their work, 100 pages of readings, and they'll send it to you two days before. But it's what you have to do to pass. Right. So I mean, struggling with all of that at the same time and learning a new place. I mean, The Hague is small. I was lucky. There wasn't much to learn. but. Those some big adjustments for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So tell us about before moving on to the, um, before moving on to Switzerland, you did your uh, your bachelor's. Yeah. And so tell us what your thesis was about. Um, about. I did my thesis on St. Martin national identity, and mm -hmm. so. So what did you find? Mm -hmm. <laughs> tell us. What did I? Uh -huh. find? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I basically I was looking more at a uh, post-colonial theorist and colonial theory theorist, and basically researching the link between identity and national identity and the roots of national identity and then of course the creation of societies here in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And so there's also the dynamics between post-colonial uh, power and now between mother country and post-colonial society. And so I just wanted to see the link between how we understood our identity and how I the idea of national identity was created by mother countries because the idea of nationalism and the national identity that we have today it was created by European states wow. and so so is that good or bad? <laughs> I, I have no comment <laughs> but basically it was a system that was then thrust upon us and it's basically how the entire world operates today we all operate through the system of nation states and so it was just interesting to see how the Caribbean tried to make it theirs then and so I researched the issue of, or not issue, but the topic of national monuments here on St. Martin and how people on St. Martin understood national monuments. Because for St. Martin's history, the Netherlands Antilles adopted the National Monuments Ordinance, I think one or two years after the Netherlands created theirs. Uh -huh. And so it was just interesting to see how it was transplanted into our societies and then how we understood it. And Basically, what I found in my paper is there was just a disconnect between what people understood mm -hmm. to be a monument and what was actually a monument. And I mean, I remember one of the issues coming up was that certain people's houses became national monuments, but they weren't being 
exactly valued as such and the people that lived in them didn't see their houses as, as monuments, monuments, you know? Yeah. And it's just interesting to see what we value as monuments compared to what actually became monuments. One of the biggest things was trees, but we don't have any trees as national monuments actually on the list. And it was just really interesting to see this disconnect. So how, how did the professors um, receive this? Uh, my teacher loved it. My, my thesis supervisor, he is from Taiwan, mm -hmm. and of course they're a colony of China right. in mm -hmm. rough terms. But um, he really loved the paper, I mean, because he also studies post-colonial uh, uh -huh. literature, and it was just interesting for him as well because now he's doing a project in Latin America and the Caribbean on how we perceive democracy because he's saying also that democracy is an imported system and that if it weren't for certain countries pushing democracy, maybe that's not how we would organize our societies. And so he's doing the research here, so it's interesting for him to see the dynamics on an island like St. Martin yeah. and for insights for himself. Yeah. So, um, so you are doing um, international affairs in Geneva. What is your vision for the future with that? Well, it has to do with what I'm going to do my master's thesis on, so I want to focus on environmental policy just because it's an area that I think is so important to the Caribbean as a region because we have to recognize that tourists are not coming here for concrete, they're coming here for our nature. Mm -hmm. And it's just, St. Martin especially, we take for granted the environment that we have surrounding mm -hmm. us and we need policies in place that really are protecting mm -hmm. uh, what we have. And I see a lot of environmental organizations working to preserve what we have or to solve certain solutions. And yet you see an unresponsive government to their claims, you know? They get brushed off way more than a lot of other concerns. And I mean, we're going to have to pay for it in later years if we don't listen to them now, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, so that's an interesting area. Um, how could you, what advice would you give to students because we are in the month of February and we're moving on, people are getting ready yeah. to move on to Holland for their st to start their studies. Yeah. What kind of advice could you give them because you experienced it firsthand? Yeah, I would say surround yourself with good people. I don't know what I would have done without my closest friends that I moved up with S4. A lot of them, one of them was from here, Angelo. Angelo. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> the other mm -hmm. ones, they were from Bonaire because Bonaire went with the St. Martin students ah, back, in, yeah. back when I went, mm -hmm. as if that was 10 years ago, it was yeah. just four. But, um, and you know, I kept them close and any time I needed help, I mean, really, they were it's there for me. Cool. And, you know, it's good to not shut yourself out just because you're not necessarily liking the environment you're in, you know? You really have to be open-minded and keep the idea in head that you're going to meet people that are different from you and that might not react the same way that people react in St. Martin. And yeah. It just takes some getting used to, but you really have to keep open-minded and don't be ashamed to ask for help at any time because everyone's struggling, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people are shy to say, oh, I go home and cry myself to sleep. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it takes that opening up. Otherwise, you get to a point where there's nothing to do besides maybe come back home or to leave the Netherlands because you've let it get that bad. Yeah. And so you really have to voice when something is wrong or when... And ask for help. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll take a break and then we come back future plans, you know, after you've done your... Um, your masters, what's next? Stay tuned and we'll be back in a moment. This is Prime Time. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, -E, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. 1. Turn your air code temperature up. 2. Use a ceiling fan instead. 3. Buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. The Daily Herald is my first source for up-to-date information and news. 
Putting together this program of prime time requires research and knowledge of current events. For local news, regional and international news, do read the Daily Herald. Welcome back and thank you very much. This is our final segment. And don't forget you can look at the program on Facebook and on YouTube if you don't get time to see it on Channel 15. Um, yeah, you can look at it on the, on the World Wide Web at your leisure. Now, um, Carl, what about kids who decide that I'm going to study to be a lawyer? And then I reach to Holland and realize, no, this, this is too difficult. And in six months, they change. And they change. And that, that's a comment that is made a lot about students when they go to, to study. Were you, did you face that dilemma? Not necessarily, but it's also because at Learning Unlimited, we had college prep. And it really was instilled in us to do so much research. I mean, one hour each week, we had to research universities, research studies. So I really went in there knowing exactly what I was going to do. And I was just lucky that I know, knew from the beginning exactly what I wanted to do. Because what I know a lot of students don't know from the beginning, but they go up there what just about, to go. Yeah, what about those packages? You're either going to take the business package or the science package. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think it's hard from such a young age to know exactly what you want to do. Because even at 21 now, sometimes I find myself thinking, Am I going down the right path? Did I choose the right thing? And I can't imagine having to have chosen at 13 or 14 a mm -hmm. stream in high school. I was lucky enough that I just did everything and it worked out in my advantage in the end. But I think research is a, is a, is a key. Yeah, definitely. And mm -hmm. I think also a lot of students don't know what's available to them. And then mm -hmm. they go to the Netherlands or to the States maybe, and they find out that there's so much different studies. There's so much different specializations. But it's just here on St. Martin, you only hear about the mainstream categories mm -hmm. or the mainstream careers. And so I think it's really hard without doing the research to know all that's out yeah. there, especially if you don't know exactly your interests. So I knew what I was good at, and I knew that I had to choose a stream that could maximize on that. And without knowing that, I would struggle too. I probably would have switched yeah. as well. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, and, and, uh, and saying that, um, what are your plans now? So now you're doing your, your master's in international affairs. Um, you have an idea as to what's, what you want to do next? I, I have many options open to me. Yeah. Um, I have to choose either continuing and maybe doing another master's that goes into my PhD. And that idea is to maybe study, do Caribbean studies and really focus on the region of the Caribbean that we're situated in, just to have a stronger background. Because especially going to Learning Unlimited, I was focused on world history and American history. So I never really got my own history or the history of the region. And I think that especially going into government, that's something that's vital to know exactly how not only we came about, but how every other Caribbean nation has decided to do things. And so there's that option for me, or there's just going straight into the professional field. And I would first be planning on working abroad before coming back to St. Martin, which is definitely the plan in the end. But first, I definitely do think that I need to get some experience, especially because if you come back to St. Martin directly after studies, I don't think I've heard all that's out there first that I can experience and benefit from to then come back yeah, here. I share that. But you know, your dad um, was in the political um, arena yeah. in his days. Um, do you see if you can look into that crystal ball all the way down, <laughs> down, down, down? You think you could ever see yourself into politics? Because you're doing things, international affairs and, and political um, 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 subjects and studies. Yeah. You, you think ever? Because um, you know our island is changing. Yes. Yeah. But I think running for politics is a different game than what I'm thinking of in my head for myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are some real issues that I want to work around. And to run for politics, I think it would take a different personality than what I have for myself, you know? But just, it's especially because of the language that comes out in politics time here. It's not an environment that I enjoy being in. And so it's just my personality myself, but we do need to hear some different voices out there running during those times. And maybe if that debate comes around, then I would throw my hat in. But until I can really hear more constructive debate going on during political times, 
I really don't see myself as a part of that That's sphere. not an area for you. No. Where do you see yourself in the next um, five years? The next five years? <clears throat> Either still in education. I, I love studying too much. You love studying? <laughs> yeah, I think it, it's my thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't want to go into academia, but Maybe I, I enjoy more. really, you know, studying theories and going into... Defending them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you do for spare time then? You said that um, uh, Switzerland is kind of laid I, back. Yeah. I do a lot of walks, beautiful scenery around me. Yeah. I mean, I live right next to the United Nations. It's where the school is located. So, I mean, parks all around. I can see the lake from my window. Mm. But otherwise, for spare time, I mean, I really try to just do as much research as I can. I'm in school from 10 to 7 every single day. So when I get home, I just cook. Do you have a core of friends that come over to eat? Yeah, yeah, I do yeah. actually. Mm -hmm. I, a really nice group of diverse friends from Ghana, Nigeria, England, and Canada. Mm -hmm. And it's really great. I mean, in the Netherlands, I didn't have so much diversity okay. in my class. Uh -huh. and just It was mainly Europeans mm -hmm. and Americans. And so now, really, in the school, it's people from all over. And a lot of Brazilians, actually. My yeah. neighbors are Brazilian. We plan on cooking together, but the past six months hasn't happened <laughs> yet. <laughs> a lot of work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so you were home for a couple of months, and you, yeah. you get back in the next week or so. Um, so what's, what are you going straight into? I'm going straight into more research classes. Mm. But this semester, actually, I get to choose more of my own courses. Right. So I'm looking forward to that. There's a lot of courses on theories of human rights and environmental institutions. So yeah. that will be the next You'll be months. busy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, Carla, thanks so much for joining us Thank in the program. You for yeah. Me. And um, yeah, we wish you success and we know we're gonna hear some great things from you. Yeah. Yes. Thanks so much for joining us and all the best. Thank you. Thanks for watching. This has been Prime Time. I'll see you next week and may God bless you.